Okay, so this is the, even though it's kind of misleading, this is the fourth part of our Hugo mini course. So we did an overview the first month and we did two months on templating just because it ended up being a bigger section than I could really cover with any kind of thoroughness in one month. Now we're going on to the style section. So we're gonna talk a little bit about just like adding CSS to your app and how Hugo Pipes works at a high level. Um, and then the next few months, we're gonna do a components in the deploying section. So components might end up being a two part as well. I don't know, we'll see when we get there. Obviously we're making this up as we go along. And then deploying, we're gonna show how to get an app up on just like a, a simple hosting platform. And I've crossed out this last section, not because I don't think it's important, but I'm just realizing that this could be its own series. So like Netlify CMS is just one way to actually um, use an open source project to do the content management um, portion of like a Jamstack site. So it allows non-technical editors to get into the site and like make content changes. So I am open to, if other people have different ideas for the next kind of course or they wanna run their own, let me know. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. But if not, then we might kind of focus on something like Netlify CMS or one of the other open source um, uh, Jamstack content management systems. So let's see here. I'm gonna flip over to a project that we've been running. So if you've been following along, um, we've created this basic structure for a Hugo, let me start my timer, a Hugo uh, website. And it looks, you know, pretty, uh, pretty standard. This is the website. Uh, it has basically a header, has a couple internal pages that don't really have anything on it, and then has a couple of blog posts. And we're just kind of going through content modeling and creating navigation before. Today, we'll just go through adding some style to this. Um, style is going to look really ugly. It's not meant to look good at this point. It's just kind of demonstrating how you would actually do the mechanics of the website. And if you haven't been following along, there are some other videos on our YouTube channel. So go back and check those. And basically, it follows the same project throughout. So let's hop over here to our project. So this is our directory structure for this app. And you can see at the high level here, we have this folder called static. And this is somewhere where we can actually start adding static files, things like our CSS files, our JavaScript files. We could add images and other assets in here. So I'm going to go through here and I'm just going to create a new directory here. I'm going to call it CSS. And then inside that CSS folder, I'm going to add a file called main.css. And I'll just open that main file here. And I'll do something like some basic styling where I'll make the background color red. And I'll save that file. Now, this file is not going to do much unless we actually connect it to the app. Obviously, it's just sitting there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our layouts folder here. And we had created this default layout folder. And basically, if you don't remember what that's doing is it's going in any content that doesn't have a specific template file for it, it's going to look to that layout, uh, that default layouts folder by default. And then we have this structure in here that is this base of the HTML. And that's the, the general base uh, structure for the HTML. So this has everything like our HTML wrapper. Right now, it currently has our head section in it, which has all our kind of metadata, like our site title, um, a external style sheet here. So we, we referenced Bulma previously to get some basic styles for our main navigation. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this into a different file to make this a little bit easier to work with. So I'm gonna cut this all out and I'm gonna reference the, a, this in a partial. So partial, I'm gonna say head and I'm going to pass the context. And if I save this and I come over here and I actually add a new folder to this layouts folder, I'm going to add partials. And that's a special name folder there. And if I add a new file to that called head.html, I can come in here and I can actually paste in that code that we grabbed from the other section, move it over here. And essentially we're just breaking our code into smaller, more manageable sections um, so we can uh, work with them a little bit easier. Let's just go quickly over here and make sure that this is still working. Okay, so I reloaded the page. So nothing's uh, really changed yet. So we're still pulling in the Bulma CSS. That seems like that's still working. 
you can see that the Jamstack Boston title is still working there. So it seems like our head section is still working, but we ha don't have our style sheet referenced in there yet. So let's just come in here and let's try to go about doing that. So I'm going to copy this section where we defined another style sheet. And instead of this CDN that we're referencing here, I'm going to just put our CSS main.css here. And if I save that, reload this, you can see that now our CSS is being loaded. So pretty standard, doesn't look all that nice, but now you have kind of like a, a general idea of how you could connect some style to something like um, this site here. Um, I'm actually gonna go through and let's see if I can get this, I'm not sure if this will work or not, but sometimes browsers cache these things. So if I save this and I make it blue, well, didn't cache it there, but sometimes you get a, a cache version of your style while you're working on these sites locally. And um, one way to get around getting cache styles, so for instance, if, if, you're, if your generator is not noticing that um, you're making <clears throat> changes to your CSS file, you might be like writing code and nothing's happening when you're looking at it on your browser. And you can avoid that by actually fin fingerprinting your files. So it actually sends like a little kind of query string to the browser. Let's take a look here and take a look at what this kind of looks like. So we go to your network tab and you look at this right here. So you can actually see that it, it is trying to cache these files here right now anyways, but this is our main CSS file. Um, and if we wanna make sure that the browser doesn't cache this while we're working on it, we can send a, a, a query string there so it actually gets a new version when we make changes to that file and you get the new updates. Um, <clears throat> you you wanna make sure that you're not like, just like sending arbitrary like time stamp like query strings to that file because you don't want the browser to do more work than it has to. Like it should cache things when it can. We only want that to change when changes have actually been made to our file. And Hugo has a really clever way of doing this. They actually um, have this concept called Hugo pipes. And what it allows us to do is actually, uh, it, it basically makes a hash based on the contents of what we're, um, we're building in our CSS. So if we change the CSS, that hash changes. And if we don't change it, the hash stays the same and it's allowed to be cached at, at that point. So. We're gonna have to do a couple of structural things here to actually make it so we can add query strings to our, um, our website here. So if we go to our head section, and we actually don't really need this, um, this base of anymore. So I'm gonna close out of this. But if we go to the head section here, it would be kind of hard to, 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 to think of how to add this query string. So we actually have to use that Hugo Pipes methodology um, in order to, to add that query string and have the static site generator aware of what string we're passing there. Um, and the way that we do that is we have to move our, our assets out of this static folder and we have to put them into a new folder called assets. That's just where Hugo pipes looks by default to run this, these different um, Hugo pipe commands. Um, if you don't do that, you, you can choose a different folder. You don't have to choose a folder, but you would just have to override that in your config file, your main config file. You, you'd use a key called, I think it's called asset dir. Um, I think that's underscore as, uh, under case asset and then capital D I R. And you set that to a different folder and then you can basically run a asset pipeline out of a different section. But for now, we're just going to use the default. So I'm just gonna come up here and I'm going to add a new folder called assets. And I'm just going to actually just come down here and the easiest thing to do is I'm just going to move the CSS folder out of the static folder and put it in the assets folder. And if I do that, and let's see if I just, um, if I refresh this, oops. You can see that we now have the main.css file in here um, and we no longer have our CSS file in the static section. So we're now working with this asset section. Um, let's come back to our layouts default, oops, layouts partial head. Let's open this back up. And looks like I have to close this blank file. Okay. So now we can start working with this. You're gonna notice that since we've moved this, it's not going to by default know where that is. We lost our style there. So we have to actually start going through and using the, the resource um, pipeline here. So the way we can do that is we can start grabbing simple assets here by basically using a construct 
called uh, resources get. So if I run resources get and I pass the CSS main.css file here, basically that's going to create a resource. A resource is, I think it's some kind of struct on the back end that has a couple of values to it. It has like a name value, has a permalink value. And once we have that, we can start passing that information to our, our reference to our style sheet here. So I'm gonna actually come in here and I'm going to pass our style.permalink. And let's save this and see if I've made syntax errors here. It looks like I've done something incorrect here. Okay, let me see. So we're defining resources dot get. Nope. Yeah, so the equals with a colon is when you're defining a variable for the first time. It's like a go template thing. Um, let me just check my notes here. So add this resources dot get main CSS main dot CSS. And we have a style dot permalink. Get the resource style. Is, did I have that wrong there? Uh, try, I don't. Yeah, I'm, hmm. Is anybody familiar with, know what I'm doing here? Style, resources, and then. Um, where are you seeing that? Um, it looks, it, it should be looking in the assets folder, I believe, because that by default. No, go like, <laughs> go like, I don't think it matters in a, in a go template, but it, um, okay, what, what do we do here? Maybe I had to restart the web server because I don't think I've saved it since I've done this double quotes. I'm not sure. Okay. Magic, I'll restart your web server. I don't know. I, I don't know how to explain what was going on there, but we can move on. Maybe someone can watch this video later and put a snarky comment in the YouTube uh, thing. Um, okay, so we're going now. So we have this, we have this, um, actual uh, going from our asset pipeline now. And if we look over here and we see our response, you'll notice that it's still just like the normal um, response here, but we can actually come through here and we can start doing some interesting things like our um, fingerprint. So we can fingerprint this. Did I spell that right? Looks like it's right. So I'm passing basically, can you see that? It's kind of hard to, to see, let's see. Um, so we have, this like pipe character and we're, we're fingerprinting. And um, when we do that, if we reload this, you can see, oh God, that doesn't work. Huh. Is there a lot? Yeah, there's, well, there's, <laughs> let's see what our thing says here. Colon fingerprint string is not a resource. Oh, cause I changed this. It's not a resource. Resources get. Fingerprint style itself. That, that should work that way. What am I doing here? Minify fingerprint. Uh, yeah, that's for what I'm doing. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, okay, I guess I do the fingerprint beforehand. All right, yeah, Chris, you're right. Um, let's try this. I, would I would've thought that would've worked, but 
Guess not. Let's, let's fingerprint it first and see if that works. Yep. Is that Chris? Is that it? Had a boy. Um, <laughs> he's running the, the next one. Um, no, that's great. Okay. So, yep. We fingerprinted it first. Uh, I, I guess like when you're printing it, <clears throat> cause I, I guess it makes sense, right? So that's the actual object that we're running that on instead of the printed permalink, which is the string representation of what we're doing. So, okay. So it's fingerprinted. Um, we can do a couple other things with it. So for instance, you can tell that right here, if I can grab this thing and actually expand it. If you look at this response here, you can see that there's like white space and indentation there. So you could, you could minify it as well. So if I were to come in here, you would just add another, um, another uh, pipe to it. And if we reload that, hopefully something here works. And okay, so now you see that this is kind of condensed and minified. So you can go through and you can add a bunch of different filters to do things. Like you, can, you can actually convert things like SCSS, for instance. So we could come in here, we could change this file here to be, move this to main.scss and we'll save that. You can see that now we're using SAS here. Um, if I come over here and I do something like, that's not valid HTML, I do some nesting and I say that the color is red and I save this, this would, can't open the file for writing. What do I have? <laughs> oh yes okay let's um thank you let's just close that and let's try to open it again man live demos are great um all right color red let's save this this, this will throw an error purposefully this time um, because we haven't converted this. Uh, well, it's giving the same thing because it's actually airing out. If I were to stop this, I don't think it would run. So now that my web server doesn't run anymore, but you could throw another pipe in here and you could just say, you know, make this to CSS and save that, start up your web server. Um, not supported resource transformations. Oh boy. Style to CSS. I'm at a loss, guys. I don't know. I don't know sure what I'm doing. Um, I, th I thought that would work. Um, just converting that over um, to CSS from SAS. The yes. Oh, you guys are great. Thank you. That should work. Yes. Okay. Excellent. And we have a red title here. Doesn't it look good? Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's far less than I was hoping to cover uh, because I hit a lot, of, a lot of errors that I didn't expect to hit. Uh, but do people have questions on this? Uh, it's apparently more complicated than I thought it was. No questions? Okay. What's up? Exactly. Because it allows us, it allows us to start using this resource get, right? So you know how we didn't append assets there? It's because it's looking there to start look. So any subfolder in the assets, you would, you'd have to say, that's your path to your file. But since it's looking in that directory, that's, that's what it does. Let, we have, does that answer that question? Let me just show, maybe I can show one last thing here before we go. So this is maybe somewhat useful to folks. Um, let's do a resources get, let's change this back. Let's, let's bring this all back here. Let's open up our main CSS. Let's get rid of all the SAS type stuff and let's com convert the file too, right? Let's, <laughs> let's do that. So we change this back to CSS. Great. And okay. So if we're back into our, our head dot, HTML file here. We could actually do something kind of fun here where we could um, add a 
it, we can make it look into a certain directory to just add CSS files automatically. And you can do this with SAS as well. I was going to show that, but let's just try to keep it simple for now. Um, let's actually make sure this still runs. Okay, so what we could do here in our CSS folder, I could create a new directory called components. And in components, I could start adding any kind of file. So I could add, let's say just test.css. And inside test.css, let's just do, so we've, we've come over here, we've changed this back to just black text, right? So let's, let's now make our header one color yellow. And let's say that. And what we could do in our, our file here, our head file, is we could actually do some auto discovery on it and try to get these values. So it, in order to avoid having lots of errors, I'm just gonna copy and paste at this point. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna read the contents of that directory. So if I were to come in here, you paste it. So we're assigning a variable components. We're reading the directory as its CSS components. And when we have that, we can do a range on those components. And again, actually, I'm gonna to try to avoid a lot of errors. So we're gonna run a range on it. We're going to just copy and paste this. We are going to get the component. We're going to do a resource get on, uh, we're basically going to print the path using the name of the file. So we don't know how many files are gonna be in here. There could be one file, there could be 10 files. So we're doing a range on all of the, the, the files that we're getting in here and we're getting the name here. Let me see if I can make this a little more legible. So a little easier to see. So we're, we're printing the name and then the path to that. And then we're doing a resource get on that because the resource get expects a string to, to get that resource. And then we're assigning that to component. And then we come in here and we're doing <clears throat> this slice to basically combine these two files here, this component and the style file. And then we're doing a resource concat. And it's basically giving it the name, the file, the name of that current component there. And what that will allow us to do is it'll allow us to have a system here where we can go through and we can actually um, just start adding new files to that and have our styles appear. And you know, let's cross our fingers that this actually is something that works. Okay, so we didn't really connect with that new file, right? So now we have a yellow title there. Let's just do a demonstration to, to show that this works with other files. So let's just, you know, instead of having to wire up new things every time we wanna add new styles, but we wanna have a component-based style, um, we can just add a new file here, we'll call it, another dot CSS, uh, we'll edit this and let's, let's get the title again. Let's make the font size a four rem. So all we did was add a new file and save it. And if we go back to our page, the styles applied there and we didn't have to like really wire anything up. So you can do some kind of interesting things um, with the pipes. Like you could have the whole workflow go and like compile your SAS yourself or use like Grunt or, or, or Gulp or like Compass or something like that. You can just have this all kind of work uh, with your, your Hugo pipes. And you can have a, a thing where you just like, you know, add files to your system and you don't have to worry about like going and stringing all those up and just have a quicker workflow for actually adding some of the styles. Once you have it set up, I mean, yeah, I, I ran into errors at pretty much every step of the way, but this isn't overly complicated what I'm doing here. I feel like if you're just looking at something and you're looking like this, you could set something up like this in maybe, you know, 15, 10, 15 minutes, something like that. And then it'll be a lot easier to go forward and, and continue your style after that. So yeah, that's it. All right, I'm gonna turn this over to Cole now and we're gonna talk about Mad Lib Forms. Thank you.